I'm Teresa and this is a sewing video. It's a sew along for pattern 1217. It's kind of a long video so I'm going to try to keep this picture short and sweet. I do think you should know that I am a self-taught sewer so I do the best that I can and I try to break it down into easy to understand steps. I made two costumes, one for my daughter and I made one to give away. Um, to be clear, this is not a giveaway video. I'm waiting to give this one away, the one with the blue sequins on it. I want to make the Anna costume view B and then send the two dresses out together. I, I don't know how long it's going to take. It might be a year from now before I actually get the Anna dress done. Um, with everything else I have going in my life, things have been crazy. But I do have that planned. You want to be notified when I do that video, of course subscribe and hit the little bell notification button, but you have been warned it's going to be a while. Also, I've had a few people say that I should uh, make a coffee account, or not Kofi or coffee, I don't know, K-O-F-I, uh, where you, it's a, the buy me a cup of coffee. So I did, I think I set it up right, I don't know. Um, if you appreciate the video or you find it helpful and you want to help support my channel, anything that I get from that will be uh, will go back into sewing. So it'll be for supplies and stuff like that too, uh, to make more sewing videos. I think that's it. So without further ado, let's get sewing. Step one, apply glitter glue to sleeve along solid lines allow glue to dry. The first thing I do is tape my sleeve pattern piece to the table. Later I can cut the extra tape off and then I have a half laminated pattern piece. But this will just protect it from the glue that will seep through the fabric. You could draw your lines onto the fabric but I chose to do it this way because I don't want any lines on the finished product. I decided it would be nice to have a rhinestone in the center of the starburst so I took my E6000 and put a little dollop in the center of the star. Then I grabbed my medium sized rhinestones and I carefully put it on the glue. Everything I do to one sleeve I have to do to the other. Make sure that you're working on the right side so that the second sleeve is a mirror image of the other and it's not the same sleeve. Then I took my glitter glue and I painted on the lines. I chose to do it this way rather than put it straight from the bottle onto the fabric so that the lines are dainty and not so chunky looking. I ended up doing two layers of silver and one layer of iridescent, letting it dry between the layers. It looks like this once the glue dries. Then, because I always like to be just a little bit extra, I put small rhinestones on the tips of the starburst. And just like the medium sized rhinestones, I used the E6000 to glue them down. Working with small rhinestones can be tricky. To make it easier on myself, I coated the end of my paintbrush with wax. I use my fingers to press the wax down. I think that you could use this with any type of wax. This is beeswax, but you could probably just use a random candle that you have lying around and it should work fine. But now I can easily pick up my jewels and put them precisely where I would like them to be. Step 2. Come lower edge of sleeve. With right sides together, stitch sleeves to bodice front armhole edges. Stitch bodice back sections to remaining armhole edges of sleeves. Cut a piece of 1 8 inch wide elastic for neck, 13 and a half inches long. Fold elastic in half to find center. Pin elastic to wrong side of neck edge, matching centers, and placing elastic 1 4 inch from raw edge. Stitch elastic in place. Keeping elastic flat on bodice front and back sections and stretching elastic to fit along sleeve edges. Step 2, Part 1. Make a narrow hem along the bottom of the sleeve. To do this, I work in sections because of the point. I start by ironing one fold down on one side of the point. This fabric doesn't like to bend or be ironed and I have to keep it on low so the fabric won't melt. Then I stitch the one fold down.
I repeat everything on the other side of the point I clip the strings and now it's time to double fold and cover up those raw edges. I iron it down on one side of the point and I stitch it just like before. And then I iron and stitch on the other side of the point. And then one sleeve is done. You have to do the same thing for the other sleeve, but of course to save time I'm not going to show you that. For a finishing touch, I add a small rhinestone to the point. Step 2, Part 2. Attach sleeves to bodice front and back. I didn't mention French seams when I did my pattern prep video. Put a little thing for it up there. If you have a fabric that shreds, French seams is the way to go because it's going to protect those uh, delicate ends of your fabric. This fabric that I'm working with, um, it was given to me. Honestly, I have no idea what it is, but it's really stiff and I can't iron it because it melts and the low setting will only just slightly bend it. It won't actually iron it down. And what I'm worried is that when I do the first seam, and I sew it together and then flip it and do that second seam down the side, that the fibers are still gonna pull at each other because the fabric is so stiff and it will eventually unravel anyways. And that's why I'm gonna do what I'm going to do. But if you have a fabric that only shreds and doesn't and isn't so stiff, it's not gonna like fight being sewn together, um, I suggest doing that instead of what I'm going to do. So here's the bodice front. You'll want to match the notches and you'll end up sewing the sleeves on in four different places, but I'm only showing you one seam. I start by pinning the sleeve to the bodice front with the right sides together. And then I go ahead and I pin the back piece to the sleeve as well with the right sides together. And only showing one seam, I sew it down And then I serge it together. Then I take it to my pressing mat. The seams want to lie away from the sleeves, so I iron them down in the direction that they naturally want to go. I take my flat lace and I measure how long to make it. I want it a little long because I can always cut the extra off later. I carefully center it over the seam onto uh, the wrong side of the fabric and I sew down the length of it on the sleeve side of the seam. If you do this you might want to pin it but it worked fine not pinning it. Then I sew the lace down on the bodice side of the seam making sure to pull the fabric so it's nice and flat on that curve. You don't want any extra fabric trapped underneath it. This is probably overkill. Uh, but I set the width to 3 on my machine and I switched the stitch to zigzag and then I zigzag down the center of the lace. I want this dress to be really durable and last for many years and not have to worry about it falling apart. And when I'm done it looks like this. Uh, this is with just one sleeve sewn on and this is with both sleeves sewn on. Step 2, Part 3 cut and sew elastic to neck edge. Here I'm folding over the neck edge and ironing it down. Because this fabric is so uncooperative, this will help me make things easier when I get to step three. Then I switch the width back to zero and I move it back to a straight stitch. Then I sew the raw edge down. I've modified this pattern by adding a little over an inch to the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more elastic and that's why I cut 14 and a half inches. It's better to have extra than not enough. I line my fabric up with the edge of the foot. I try to keep my elastic centered in the hole of the foot and then I begin to sew the elastic down. 
Be very careful not to stretch the elastic on the bodice back. When I got to the sleeve, I adjusted my fabric by putting my needle down and lifting up my foot and kind of pivoting it just a tiny bit. And then after lining the elastic up, I stretch it as tight as I can. Make sure that you're only stretching it on the sleeves. Then when I get to the bodice front, I lay the elastic flat again and I adjust the fabric. So yeah, you just go ahead and sew it down and stretch it and sew it again. And finish it up with no stretch on the bodice back. I end up with a lot of unused elastic and I just snip it off. Step three, turn neck edge to inside, encasing the elastic. Stitch again over the first stitching, stretching the elastic as you sew. On outside, stitch metallic trim to neck edge over elastic. This next step is pretty easy because I've already folded over the raw edge. I just fold the edge over to the inside and I sew it down, making sure to stretch the elastic on the sleeves. And this is what it looks like when it's done. If I was using metallic trim, I would sew it on now. However, I'm going to hand sew these rhinestones on, but I'm going to wait until after the Velcro is sewn on to do that, so I'm just setting those aside for now. Step 4. Stitch bodice front to back at entire underarm seam, matching armhole seams. Take your sleeve and fold it with the right sides together. You'll be sewing down the sleeve seam and the side of the bodice. Because I'm reinforcing all the seams on my sheer fabric, I measure and cut my lace. I'm going to spare you all the details on this because hopefully you'll be using better fabric than I am. But anyways, I sew the sleeve and the bodice sides together. I end up sewing the inside lace reinforcement by hand. And here it is once both sides have been completed. It's actually starting to look like clothing. I surged the raw edges of the bodice to prevent it from fraying. And I try it on my Kirsten here for a fitting. The sleeves are a little tight, but it works. And I'm happy with the modifications that I did on the back. I think the extra fabric was definitely needed. And as of right now, I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like it's, it's coming together nicely. Step 5. Stitch center front seam of skirt front above large dots. Back stitch a dot to reinforce seams. The first thing I do is serge the raw edges of the inner seam. It's the one with the two triangles. So yeah, here I serge both sides separately and when I'm done, I lay them down with the right sides together and mark the large dots with the pin. Then I sew from the waist of the skirt down to the pin, reinforcing by backstitching. Step 6. Stitch center back seam of skirt back sections from lower edge to large dot. Backstitch a dot to reinforce seam. Stitch skirt front to back at side seams. Press under center front opening edges of skirt and stitch closely to pressed edges. Squaring stitching at upper end of narrow opening. Narrow hem lower edge of skirt. Step six, part one. Press open front seam and stitch down the opening. Yes, this is a little bit out of order, but it's just how I made it. Because I'm doing a top stitch, I switched to matching thread. Also, I forgot to film it, but I lengthened my stitch to two and a half. And then I sew it down. I'm making two dresses while I make this video and as you can see here on the first dress I forgot to switch the stitch length and it looked really bad. I thought that I could make a second line of stitches and it would help it but I should have ripped the stitches out and sewn it again. I think that the longer stitch makes it look so much nicer. Step 6 part 2. 
stitch center back seam of skirt. You need to sew the skirt from the bottom of the flap down, but first I want to finish the raw edges. I decided to serge it even though it has this small weird angle. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I just don't know what it is. So all I can do is show you what I did, even though it's wrong. It works, but it's wrong. I serge it where I can, but when I'm done, it has the space that was too small to serge. So I set my width to three and I switched the stitch to zigzag and I just zigzag back and forth on that little corner. And as I said before, this is most likely the wrong way to do it. I don't know the correct way to do it. Nobody's going to see it unless they are inspecting the inside of the dress and barely anybody does that. So I don't think you have anything to worry about if you do decide to do it this way. And if you know how to do it right, then you should tell me because I don't know how. And so far I've been too lazy to look it up to figure out how to do it properly. But anyways, I lay them down with the right sides together and I pin it. I change my stitch length back to zero and I switch it back to a straight stitch. And then I sew it from the flap down. And once that is sewn down, I press the seams open. Step six, part three. So front of skirt to back of skirt at side seams. With right sides together, I pin the skirt on both sides. And then I serge and sew them together. And here's what it looks like. I then iron the seams so that they face the back of the skirt and then I press the seam on the outside. At this point, I decide to finish off the raw edges. I didn't film myself doing that, but here's what it looks like when I'm done and I just searched them. Step six, part four, put a narrow hem on the bottom of the skirt. Hemming curves can be really tricky. You can do a narrow hem like I did on the sleeves where you fold it and sew it and then fold it and sew it again. Or you can do what I'm going to do and I just folded over the serged end and I ironed it. I use my point press clapper after ironing to help the folded edge lay as flat as it can. The trick here is to really take your time. I set my machine stitch length to two and a half before sewing the hem down. And after sewing a curved hem, it usually ends up kind of bumpy, so it's important to iron that curve after sewing it. Step seven. With right sides together, stitch skirt to bodice at waistline seams, matching centers and side seams. Press seam towards skirt. Finish back opening, cutting hook and loop tape six inches long. The first thing I do is fold the bodice with the wrong sides together to find the center of the bodice. And then I lay the center of the bodice over the center of the skirt with the right sides together and I pin it down. Then I switch my stitch back to one and I sew the two sides together. And once the bodice is sewn on, I take it to my pressing mat and I iron the seam down toward the skirt. Then, because this fabric shreds and it's the worst, I take my lace and I cut the length I need to reinforce the seam. I set my stitch width to three and the stitch to zigzag. Then I zigzag stitched the seam down with the lace on top of it, and this was on the bottom of the lace. But again, this is not necessary if you are using the recommended fabric or if you're doing French seams, you would do this different. Then I switch my thread back to white and back to a straight stitch with the width of zero, and I sew the upper edge of the lace to the fabric. And when it's done, it looks like this. Step seven, part two, finish the back opening. 
back opening, cut length of hook and loop tape in half lengthwise and save the remaining piece for a future project or use the full width of the tape when specified in sewing directions. Separate tape. On outside, pin the tape to back opening edges, placing inner edge of tape along center back. Stitch tape close to inner edge. Turn left back opening edge to inside along center back. Press. Stitch 1 4 inch from press edge through all thicknesses, catching in remaining edge of tape. All right, guys. I did not follow the directions with this, but there's so much going on here that I didn't really feel like it's gonna be a big deal. The first thing I do is sew down the back edge. It's kind of wonky and I feel like it would be easier to sew the Velcro on if I did it this way, but this is not the right way to do it. I set my machine to my preferred zigzag stitch setting and I sew down the fold so that it's even. One side is slightly less folded than the other side. I do switch my thread. I do white for the bodice and light blue for the skirt. Once that is done, it's time for hook and loop tape. I take it and I cut it to a length of six inches and you cut down the center to make two strips. When I sew it on, I put the scratchy side up and I put the soft side facing down. I didn't film sewing it together, but I used a straight stitch and I made sure to match my thread with the different colors so that on the outside you won't be able to see the stitching as well. And now it's time to sew on the rhinestone trim. These are different rhinestones than I showed you earlier. After digging through my stash, I found these dainty ones and I decided to go with them. After hand sewing them on, it looks like this. And for a finishing touch before I move on to the bustier, I glue a small white snowflake to the bottom of the sleeve with E6000. Pin wrong side of bustier front overlay to bustier front, matching centers and having raw edges even, base draw edges together. Base bustier back overlay to bustier back sections in the same manner. I start by gluing blue snowflakes to the center area, kind of in a V going up. I use E6000 to glue them on and then I let it sit for 24 hours to dry. Once it's dry, I take my fusible interfacing and I iron it onto the wrong side of the bustier. The directions don't call for this. I'm choosing to do it so it has a little bit more of a corset feel. And then it's time to baste the overlay to the bustier. I'm basting two layers of this snowflake mesh netting. And basting is just a long stitch that will temporarily hold it together and it'll be easy to rip out later. I'm using white thread for this. So here it is with the two layers basted on. I love it. Now I'm moving on to the back of the bustier and I'm only gonna do one layer of netting on the back because it's gonna be covered by the cape anyways, so it doesn't really matter. And yeah, I basted it on just like I did for the bustier front. Step 9. Make darts in bustier front, press towards center front, stitch bustier front to bustier back at side seams. I use my pencil to mark the darts on the bustier for both the outside and the lining piece. The directions just have you do the outside bustier piece, but I'd rather do both darts now.
after the pieces are marked, I iron them so that they won't shift and then I sew them down. Then you iron the darts so that they're facing the inside center of the bustier. I sewed the side seams together matching the triangles and then pressed the seams open. Since none of these edges will be exposed, I'm not going to bother serging them. Step 10, prepare cape applique. Apply applique to cape along broken lines matching center back, large dots, and having raw edges even. Lay out one side of your cape, take your applique piece, and peel off the paper. Lay it onto the cape according to the pattern. I have to protect the fabric from my iron, but I also have to get it hot enough to melt the glue to fuse the fabric together. So I use some spare fabric to put on top of the applique and I iron it down. I have to iron it a couple of times um, and even though I thought that I ironed it on good enough, I still had to go back later and use glue, um, use some fabric glue to glue it down. And when both appliques are ironed on, it looks like this. Step 11, stitch center back seam of cape from lower edge to large dot. Back stitch a dot to reinforce seam. Press under 1 4th inch on back opening edges of cape. Stitch close to pressed edges, squaring stitching at lower end of opening. Narrow hem, side, and lower edges of cape. Gather upper edges of cape between the notches. Step 11, part 1. Sew the cape together from the dot down the center seam. I lay the cape pieces with the right sides together. and then I mark the dot with a pin. I put a couple more pins in to stabilize it, and then I'll sew from the dot to the bottom of the cape. To finish the raw edges, I just fold them over and sew them down. I'm hoping that the glue from the webbing will help keep the applique from fraying. And I just use a straight stitch to sew it down. I don't bother sewing the raw edges of the net. It's fine just the way it is. And I'm also not going to hem the, the bottom of the cape uh, since it's net. Um, but if you're using fabric, you would definitely want to do um, some kind of narrow hem on the sides and across the bottom of the cape. Step 11, part 2. Gather the upper edge of the cape. The first thing I did was mark where to start gathering with a pin. At this point, we lost power. We had a big windstorm the night before. Normally, I'd set my machine stitch length to the longest stitch and gather it that way, but because we didn't have power, I just sit by a window and I use a basting stitch to gather the edges of the cape. Step 12. On outside, pin wrong side of cape to upper edge of bustier, matching centers, back, and large dot, placing small dots at side seams. Pull up gathering stitches to fit and baste. So here I pin the ends down before pulling the string to gather it, and then I pin it down. Make sure that you have the right side of the cape facing up. So the bustier is facing up and the cape is also facing up. You kind of get in the habit of putting the right sides together when you sew, but you don't want to do that here because if you do that, when you flip it out after putting the lining on, it will be upside down. So bustier side up and the cape side up. And basically you're pinning it down how you want it to lie once you're done. I put my stitch length back to one and I sew it down.
Then I take out all the pins and I cut the strings. Step 13. Make dart and stitch seams of bustier lining same as for bustier. With right sides together, stitch lining to upper edge of bustier, matching centers and side seams. Trim seams, clip curves. Since I've already done the darts on the lining, I skip ahead to sewing the lining to the bustier. I'm doing this a little bit different because I don't want to use Velcro. I'm using these uh, sew on snaps instead. The Velcro catches on the net and I don't want the cape to be ruined over time. So I'm going to sew the center back and across the top of the bustier. I lay the lining on top of the bustier and cape with the right sides together. I pin it down and I sew it together. Step 14. Turn bustier right side out, press, pressing cape out, baste raw edges together. Before turning it right side out, I clip the curves, and then I turn it right side out and I iron it. It's worth the time to baste the raw edges together. Step 15. Open out one edge of single fold bias tape, trim away 1 8 inch, with right sides together pin tape to lower edge of bustier, having raw edges even, and clipping tape to crease at center front, as shown. Stitch, trim point, and seams, clip curves. Now I take some bias tape and I measure the length that I need. I cut it a little bit longer than I need because I can trim it later and tuck the ends in and then I lay it on um, the right side of the bustier and I sew the edges together. And take your time around the point here. It looks like this. And in the next step, you'll, of course, fold it over like this. Step 16. Turn tape to inside, folding out fullness at point. Press. Slip stitch tape to lining. Finish back opening of bustier, cutting hook and loop tape, 1 and 3 4 inch long. Using the full width of the hook and loop tape, glue snowflake sequence to bustier front and cape as shown on front of envelope or as desired. So here I'm at my pressing mat and I take my bias tape and I fold it all the way to the inside. You don't want the tape to show on the outside. I use my iron to help. It's hard when you're working with so many layers of fabric, um, but once I'm sure that it's iron pressed in iron and it's gonna stay where it is, then I hand sew it down with a simple whip stitch and you know, just take your time. Mine looks awful. It's super messy on the inside and I don't care. I'm happy with it. Nobody's going to see it. As I mentioned earlier, the Velcro catches on the net fabric. I sew snaps on instead. Four of them seems to hold the bustier on really well, and I didn't film myself sewing them, but when I'm done, it looks like this. And now it's time for embellishments. I have snowflake sequins in white and blue, and I have a bunch of little gems and rhinestones. I use E6000 to glue them on. So this E6000 that I'm using, yeah. I never actually sat down and read the bottle. It's Extreme Tack E6000. It doesn't smell, so I was like, wow, this stuff's amazing. And uh, yeah, um, it dries tacky, so it's never gonna not be sticky. And here I've been gluing it on net, and this cape is 
ridiculously tacky. It sticks to everything. It sticks to itself. Um, because the glue is doing what it is supposed to be doing. It will always be tacky. After having a slight, what have I done, panic attack, I came up with the idea of using iridescent dust glitter to get rid of that stickiness. So that's what I'm doing here. I just cover the front and back of the cape with the glitter, and then I shake a lot of this the glitter off off camera, and I, I just get as much off of it as I can. It ends up giving it a really awesome frosted look um, that's quite stunning in real life. It's kind of kind of hard for the camera to pick up all the glitter on it, but it's really pretty. Step 17. Apply stabilizer to crown fabric block following manufacturer's directions. Fold fabric block over stabilizer and fuse in place. Transfer crown pattern markings to one side of prepared fabric. Cut out crown along markings using a craft knife. Glue rhinestones to the center of crown and decorate edges with glitter glue. Punch holes in crown at small dots using an awl. Insert ends of elastic cord through holes and knot ends as shown. First, I peel off the paper on the fusible webbing. I have an extra sheer piece of fabric that I lay down first. And then I take some fusible interfacing and I lay it glue side down. Uh, next, I take my crown pattern piece and I lay that glue side down on the interfacing, kind of making an interfacing sandwich. And then I iron it down. Uh, once it's been ironed on good enough, I cut it out. Experience has taught me not to trust this, just the interfacing glue and the webbing glue. So um, I take it to my sewing machine and I stitch it together. My stitch length is set to two. And I just take my time here. On the points, I use the hand crank on the side of the sewing machine instead of using the, the pedal because uh, I have a little bit more control that way. Next, I take these gems and embellish the crown with the largest one of them. Then, I paint the silver glitter that I used in the sleeve. Um, I paint that around the edges. Add a few more rhinestones to it. Then I decide I'd like the crown to have that glittery sparkle that I used on the cape. So I use a clear glue and I paint the I paint the glue onto the crown and then I dip it in my um, in my iridescent glitter. And let it dry. After it dries, I take the stretch cord. You can usually find this in the bead area of Walmart, and I cut 10 inches. I put my machine stitch to a small zigzag and I sew it on. The final step is to sew the rhinestone trim on the bottom of the ice crown. This is the same trim that I used on the neck edge of the bodice. And friends, it is finally done. My six-year-old wanted to help, so here he is helping. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, and I hope this video helps you to make your own Ilsa. See you next time. Bye.